Welcome, Trinidad and Tobago, to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I am Gregory McBurney. Let's take a look at the headlines. Government works toward free early childhood education by 2015. Transport Ministry takes note of Cabinet for new inter-island cargo vessel and constitutional reform for Tobago to be given attention. Thank you for joining us. The Government of Trinidad and Tobago is looking at the possibility of securing a newer vessel to service the two islands. This as the 34-year-old Warrior Spirit, which takes freight from the port of Port of Spain into Scarborough, has been running on one of two engines. The Honorable Stephen Cady's Minister of Transport made this revelation at the weekly post-Cabinet news conference. The Honorable Stephen Cady's Minister of Transport said with the issues being faced by the warrior spirit, a decision has been made to reduce the speed of the vessel from six hours between the two islands to just a single direction sailing per day. He explained that instead of sailing every day, the vessel can only now be sailed from Scarborough every other day. The Warrior Spirit transports general and heavy cargo such as steel beams, gravel and sand and other building materials as well as trailer trucks. The Warrior Spirit is a 34-year-old vessel that is on that run and on December the 8th of 2013, last December, uh, we had a failure on the starboard engine. Um, it was felt that the um, by the owners that they could have actually repaired the vessel whilst the vessel was making the run, which is typical in, in, in maritime terms. Um, normally you can have major engine repairs being done whilst the, the, the vessel is moving. Um, they made many attempts at getting it done. Um, however, that has, um, it has proven not to, be, um, not to work, and therefore we still have uh, the Warrior Spirit running on one engine. The rated speed of the Warrior Spirit was, um, at the, t uh, the signing of the contract, was supposed to be 16 knots. We achieved close to it. We were just over 14 knots um, per sailing. Um, that put the Warrior Spirit um, on a schedule of about six hours between, between the islands, between the two ports. Of course, now with only running on one engine, um, that speed um, essentially is, is halved. Minister Cady said to address this problem, government has decided to use the lighter days of the fast ferries to transport freight to Tobago. We have um, taken two days of the week, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, which are fairly light days for the passenger ferries, the fast ferries, and we have reconfigured the, the, um, the, the vehicle area um, which we can now take um, three ton to five ton um, trucks. Um, so we will be doing that on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and we can take approximately 30 of those units per sailing. So that would take up some of the slack, um, or some of the yeah, some of the, the freight that would not be going on the on the Warrior Spirit. We can actually accommodate on the regular on the fast ferries. The problem with the with, with in Trinidad is that you don't have a, a Warrior Spirit type vessel. Um, available, just hanging around. Meantime, on the issue of security at ports of entry across the country, the minister said government was acquiring two 20 million vehicle scanners. The, the um, vehicle scanners were part and parcel of the PSIP um, for this current um, fiscal year. And therefore, um, yesterday we made the decision that they, we, they will be going ahead to, um, to do the tendering, tendering process and for the purchase of these vehicle vehicle scanners. Um, you know, whatever decision we make today is always going to be um, centered around the, 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 the drug bust. But a lot of this has already been put into place. The, the, um, the, the projects were already um, determined, etc., etc. Felicia Wilson, more News 4. Staying with Post Cabinet, as part of the government's plan to achieve free early childhood education in Trinidad and Tobago by May 2015, Government will be entering into public-private sector partnerships with 571 privately run early childhood education centers. This has been revealed by Dr. Tim Gopisingh, Minister of Education, during the post-cabinet media conference. Addressing the post-cabinet news conference at the office of the Prime Minister in Sinclair, Dr. The Honorable Tim Gopisingh, Minister of Education, said Cabinet had approved the updating of the status report on its promise of universal early childhood education in this country by 2015. The Honorable Minister revealed that the government will be entering into public-private sector partnership 
with 571 privately run early childhood education ECE centers to facilitate the students. Adding that this will run parallel with the government's plan to construct a total of 150 ECE centers before the end of its first term in office. Minister Gopi Singh said the proposed 150 ECE centers will cater for approximately 10,500 children, while the remaining 20,000 children will be facilitated in privately run ECE centers. Currently, the Ministry of Education is constructing early childhood education centers. We have completed the construction of 52 early childhood education centers within the last three and a half years. We are commencing another 24 within one month's time. And it is our intention to construct from now, be, between now and the end of our first term in 2015, a total of 150 early childhood education centers. And we are well on our way to doing that, utilizing some of the existing spaces in the denominational board schools and spaces around the country, according to our demographic data. Minister Gopi Singh said government will not forsake quality for quantity, especially that each of the new centers to be built would cost at least $6 million. The ECC division of the Ministry of Education has been completing validation exercises throughout the country to determine which of the 726 privately run ECC centers fit the conditions for high quality delivery of teaching to our three-year-olds and four-year-olds. So far, they visited 650 of these centers, I'm advised, out of the 726, and the work is continuing. And they have estimated that 571 centers, which cater for 19,600 children, age three and four, are deemed to be capable of providing good, acceptable ECC education. Felicia Wilson Mon News 4. The issue of constitutional reform in Tobago is addressed after the break. Stay with us. The topic of constitutional reform is one that would have been exhausted in the lead up to the January 21st, 2013 THA election campaigns by all competing parties. It was one of the major topics discussed on the political platforms and this topic, viewed by many, determined the outcome of the elections. It is now one year since the last THA election and the constitution has not changed. In light of this, Minister of Tobago Development Dr. The Honorable Delmont Baker again raised the issue with members of the media at a press conference held at his office this week. He stated that the government and the THA have differing views on the bill and he intends to treat with the issue so some kind of progress can be made where constitutional reform is concerned. The ministry has now adopted a formula to ensure that we can bridge the obvious divide between the Tobago House of Assembly and the central government. Now, you would have noted um, a couple of weeks ago that there was a meeting held between the various um, political leaders on the island of Tobago to settle or to discuss this issue of internal self-government for Tobago. He spoke of meetings held with the leader of the platform of the Truth, Ho Choi Charles, and Mrs. Deborah Moore Miggins on the issue. I, as Minister of Tobago Development, am pleased that after many uh, meetings with the um, Venerable Ho Choi Charles and Ms. Um, Deborah Moore Miggins at this office, that we were able to add some fire um, to those two leaders. And I had asked the then Ho Choi Charles to have a discussion with the Chief Secretary on this matter to see how we can move the process forward. Minister Baker made a firm declaration to members of the media stating that no longer will discussions on constitutional reform happen behind closed doors. This issue is one that is too serious 
and too important and one that must be conducted in the full light of the media and in the full light and knowledge of all of the people of Tobago. The minister says he plans to transpose this idea of internal self-governance for Tobago into a public lecture series consisting of panel discussions for detailed discussions. Four of the 12-part series will take place at the ministry's building in Scarborough, while the remaining eight parts will occur at various villages around Tobago. The Tobago House of Assembly is one step closer to officially having a new TRHA board as all the names submitted by THA's Chief Secretary Orville London to the government have been approved. This information was disseminated to members of the media at a press conference held by the Ministry. Let me announce that after due consideration by the Board's Committee of the full Cabinet that the following persons have been agreed to, and this is the full list of names submitted by the THA on the subject matter. The Chairman of the Board is Mr. Trevor Craig, Deputy Chairman Mrs. Lydia Peters, Director Mr. Curtin Daniel, Ms. Ingrid Melville, Director, Ms. Lystra Sebro, Mr. Max James, Mr. Gerald McFarlane and Mr. Alan Cooks. Information received by the Ministry of Tobago Development from the Chief Administrator, Dr. Ellis Burris, requested to have Dr. Sandeep Kumar replace Maria Dillon Remy on the board. And that would mean that the Tobago House of Assembly would in fact have had its full list of THA board of, uh, members appointed in accordance with the THA Act and in accordance with the uh, mandates of the Cabinet of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Minister Baker states clearly that the government of Trinidad and Tobago respects Tobagonians and respects the THA and therefore has no problems with any of the names submitted for consideration on the TRHA board. The preceding TRHA board's term expired in August 2013. Sport News is next. Stay with us. To Sports News Now, Sports Minister Anil Roberts has called on the Caribbean community to band together in an effort to protect regional athletes. He sounded the warning while speaking before an international audience at the launch of the Conference on Science, Higher Education and Business hosted by the University of the West Indies and the First Citizens Sports Foundation. News for Sports at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship, courtesy the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. All of us in the Caribbean must protect our Caribbean region that is under attack. We have not realized as a unit that we are under attack. We have become under attack since Usain Bolt came to the fore. And he ran right here in the Hazy Crawford Stadium signaling that in 2008 gold medal was coming. But his dominance and the dominance of Fraser Price and Bahamas and Trinidad and Tobago with Richard Thompson, now J. Hugh Gordon with the track and field 4x100, the 4x400, total domination of the Caribbean. People don't like that. The big money people don't like that. While he did not define the form of this attack, he did state that major global sponsors of sport events, particularly those in which regional athletes compete and win, were not pleased by the sportsmen and sportswomen accepting top honors. A win by Caribbean athletes, he said, did not move their retail products in the desired volumes for greater earnings. The problems have worsened, said Minister Roberts, but the fact that some islands were perpetrating this uncomfortable dynamic to hurt another, not realizing they were in fact attacking growth and sustainability of Caribbean sports. If they attack Jamaica, then we might benefit. So keep quiet. And if they attack Bahamas, we might benefit. So keep quiet. And then they came for Trinidad and Tobago. And we couldn't keep quiet. So we have to understand what is going on. We must understand the media, how to deal with it, how to generate revenue, how and what is the impact of an athlete giving back to their country, to their institutions. He told the gathering that if someone wanted to be a sports psychologist, they must understand the science of coaching, the macro science of training, how the energy system operates and what athletes have to eat and how they slept. 
But focusing on their mental well-being was not all he said. You must also understand how they must interact with the media, how they deal with what we call staritis as they move up the ladder, how they deal with success, how they interact with their family. If they have a girlfriend and they have to bank her or they get blank, how to deal with that. You have to understand what their parents are going through, what they learned in school, their religious beliefs. The minister says he has coached many children, some who were Seventh-day Adventists, and imagine having a Caribbean championships on a Saturday. Can't swim, but you have to understand that they are willing and you must respect all and understand each aspect. The minister underscored that one must understand the legal nuances in the field and must understand Caribbean political and geopolitical nature of sport. Joseph Lopez, News 4. Concerns regarding the future of the national under-20 women's team arose following their fourth place finish in the CONCACAF Championship, which recently concluded in the Cayman Islands. Those concerns were put to rest on Wednesday by the Honorable Annal Roberts, Minister of Sport. Here is Wayne Cunningham with the details. News for Sports at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship. Good to see the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. The Minister of Sport, Annal Roberts, was passionate with his praise for the Trinidad and Tobago under 20 women's team and the reception in their honor at the Hilton Hotel on Wednesday. You will go to World Cup, one, two, three, many, but you will always remember your sport, the respect you have for your sport, and the respect you have for the red, white, and black. I saw it with my own eyes. I saw it when you all played, and it was a tremendous sight to see. So I am extremely proud of you all. So give yourselves and you all give them a real round of applause. <laughs> Minister Roberts said it's no easy task obtaining funds and he gave some insight into the procurement process. The country does not understand what it takes and how the system works. Everybody seems to feel that they have a big pool of money like George Bovell Aquatic Center that built in Coover, and the minister could just tell the permanent secretary or the CEO, scoop out some and give, and give. It does not work like that. If it is not budgeted, you have to go to cabinet, you have to go and argue, get that approval. If you get that approval and it's confirmed, you then have to go by the Ministry of Finance, and if they tell you they can't find it or you ain't getting it, you could have your cabinet approval waving it from now till thy kingdom come, but you ain't getting money from finance. There is no money. The young woman then got some welcome news. And we are proud of you all because every step of the way, you fought and you made us proud. You inspire us to wake up in the morning and work harder. And because of that, all you have worry, what all you have worry about the team and you want the team to stay together and bam, bam. All you have training Saturday morning, 7.45. You continue training with full team, full everything with the senior squad. You have Olympic qualification starting next year, June. You don't start for that. Some of you all, whoever the coach like, will take you all to the senior level to go to play in, in Mexico and so on. So all you ain't go no way. Just get all your boots. Who vex? All you could cost when all the day. But see all early Saturday morning. This team will not dissipate. It will not disappear. Your training continues. You did very well. We press on towards Rio 2016 for this team, which will be under 23. And you work with the senior team. And I will get the money. All you don't fight, frighten by that. Because I can argue. You have given me equipment. You have given me ammunition to argue on your behalf. I can do that, I will do that, and whoever wants to argue in my, with me against me in cabinet, get out my way because I'm coming. Understand that? And that is what it's about. So it's a strong message to all athletes in Trinidad and Tobago. We're here to support. We have not seen the last of this squad. We're in Cunningham, News for Sports. More news after the break. Stay with us. Sportsmen and women are advised to adapt strict discipline and fair play in their everyday lives as they seek to perfect their craft. 
The call comes from former Trinidad and Tobago cricket captain Darren Ganga as he delivers the feature address at the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission's 17th annual prize and award ceremony. Former Trinidad and Tobago cricket captain Darren Ganga is adamant that without discipline and fair play, all sports, whether cricket, football or athletics, would be in jeopardy of colossal failure. Delivering the feature address at the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission's 17th Annual Prize and Awards Ceremony, Mr. Ganga congratulated the sport personalities who received recognition for their various disciplines, but was quick to note that only through strict discipline and commitment could they achieve for the success. He explained to athletes that discipline was the practice of training people to obey rules or code of behavior, but it was also their responsibility to have self-restraint and to behave and practice in a strict, controlled manner. Discipline and fair play in sports. And what really is fair play? It's an established standard of decency and honesty, or in other words, an abidance by a particular standard. What is discipline? It's training expected to produce a specific character or pattern of behavior, especially training that produces a moral or mental improvement. The notion of fair play is a universally understood concept which underpins all of sport. Without fairness, sport is devoid of any meaning or purpose. Worse still, it can be a detrimental experience for its participants. But fair play is also a philosophy, one of respect for others, the respect for the institution of sport. It leads to an agreement between all of those involved in sport on the values and lessons that we want sport to teach our children and ourselves. Mr. Ganga applauded TNTech for recognizing and supporting the efforts of athletes. He, however, stated that the discipline he spoke of was not only for athletes but should be adopted by everyone seeking to meet great heights in their own lives and careers. Sport engages us in a collective effort to pursue human excellence. I no wonder why this uh, club is so very important to your institution because I'm sure from a vision and mission perspective that is uppermost in terms of the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission. According to Johnny Lewis, be 100% disciplined and you have a good chance of success. Without it, you will never reach great heights, whether in business or sport. Felicia Wilson, more News 4. And that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services and the Ministry of Communications. I am Gregory McBurney. Thank you for joining us.